Cyberpunk 2077 is a beautiful game. From the outside looking into Night City, we're met with overwhelming flashes of neon beaming back at us. Ad strips shoot into the sky, making sure that even the Elder Caldos know what's selling lately. The streets themselves are littered with gangs, crime and murder on every corner. And yet, I can't help but continue to stare at this game in awe every time I play. Mesmerised at CDPR's fully visually realised, sprawling open world futuristic metropolis. As a Cyberpunk content creator, I probably see more use from photo mode than most people. And in getting good photos for my thumbnails, I've spent many dedicated hours seeking out the best views and backdrops, as well as a few tips and tricks for better photos and how to control conditions for the surrounding world. So join me on a journey to visit 10 of the most scenic locations I've found around Night City and beyond. In no particular order of preference, at number 10 we have one of my more recent discoveries for scenic hotspots, that being Kerry Uridine's house up in Northoak. For the best views and shots at this location, we're going to have to get up onto the roof, which can be achieved by utilising the Guts super jump. By equipping rare fortified ankles and acquiring Guts, a method which I've done a short on and you can find in the description, we can jump onto Kerry's roof and look out upon this beautiful view of Night City, which is stunning both day and night. Since this class is as Kerry's residence though, we'll be unable to draw any weapons on the roof for weapon shots, save for this little corner up here, which is out of the bounds of Kerry's residence and to be honest I think has the best view anyway. The signs and luminescence of Night City really shine from here and it's a great backdrop to show off all variety of character builds and appearances. As a little bonus in case you can't super jump onto Kerry's house yet or want a wider view, the Arasaka residence is up on the hill just behind and we can get in by either climbing the rocks or hopping over the gate. Getting to the roof we get similar views into Night City but with Kerry's palm trees down below. Still not a bad view, and I also got the picture for my katana's ranked thumbnail down in the garden here. If you angle it right, you can get some really nice Japanese garden shots. I'm not gonna lie, there are tons of great spots in the Badlands for far off shots of Night City, and I find this view in general is best enjoyed at night. The best vantage points in my personal opinion are just down here southwest of Rocky Ridge. Here we have a rock to climb up for a nice view of the sprawling desert leading into Night City, or if we don't want to see the wind turbines then travelling down a bit and climbing onto this one furthest away will give us a slightly closer, less obstructed view. I love looking at Night City from this angle and as a Nomad V especially, it does indeed give off heavy outsider looking in vibes. Now I don't know if it already exists but a mod which creates a more Witcher 3 type main menu with V knelt down in front of a campfire and Night City in the background would be perfect from this kind of area and angle. Some of the loudest and largest views in the whole game can be seen from standing within the city centre. With tons of signs, lights and points of focus, like the giant blue and orange fish, this has been a go-to top location for me when capturing cool and vibrant images. It's certainly one of the fanciest locations in the game and I'd probably be better off getting pictures in this zone wearing a corpo suit whilst on some corpo business. Even still, it's not like this jacket hasn't seen plenty of action in the city centre before, and technically it's right at home in this location. Only issue I sometimes have here is facial lighting. Dimmer photos can still look nice, but from a YouTube thumbnail perspective, not ideal. Still, I imagine most of you are just watching this for a scenic location tour, and that probably isn't a problem for you. Up at the edge of Rancho Coronado, we can travel to this damn viewpoint. Funnily enough though, I don't actually think that this is the best viewpoint along this stretch of road. And apparently, Muammar Reyes agrees with me. By driving up to where he's always stood, looking down on 6th Street's district, we can get a fantastic view. Not too dissimilar to the one at Kerry's house admittedly, though with this we're treated to less close up tall buildings and neon lights, and rather more sprawling suburbia than various mega buildings, and finally the scrolling ad strips of the inner city. By standing on top of the shelter or indeed just against the wall, we can get great first person and drone perspective shots, depending on what you're going for. It's also way less faff to reach this vantage point than the ones mentioned in North Oak. Now a very quick way to up the quality of any photo mode image, which I use very often, is to bring up the exposure, contrast and highlights in the effects tab. With contrast balancing out the other two, we often wind up with much nicer and more vibrant game screenshots than we otherwise would. The only exception to this rule would be incredibly bright scenarios, say out in the desert during the middle of the day. 
Another great looking region of Night City is the vibrantly lit district of Japantown, and the best way to see this in all its glory is actually across the water in Kabuki, a predominantly slum district though we will have to climb out from the very base level, in order to achieve an unobstructed view of Japantown's skyline. Now climbing here can be a little dangerous and I fell right the way back down doing this more than once. Whilst the fortified ankles do let us jump the highest, they are certainly clunkier than the reinforced tendons. And there we finally go, a beautiful unobstructed view of one of the brightest and most colourful districts of Night City. Now whilst you're up here, I'd suggest rummaging around on these rooftops as there is plenty of treasure and random loot containers to be found. It is indeed probably one of the areas with the most hidden gems out of everywhere in the game. And when you're finally done rummaging through, let's head west a bit towards Little China for an even better view of this part of town. You should before long come across one of Regina's gigs known as Merc Fixer Soldier Spy, a mission involving heading to the penthouse of this building in order to steal a data shard. Now I just blitzed through this because A I was simply after the view and B I've now become obsessed with the method of throwing and shooting grenades, which I cover in more depth in my grenades ranked video. However, word of advice when you're doing this, Regina will not be happy unless you do this with stealth. Anyway, atop the building is a really nice Japanese garden, providing a beautiful place to look out across multiple night cities skylines. We can again look across towards Japantown, this time with Japanese decor in the foreground too, or we can instead look northward to north side, or indeed south to the city centre. Without a doubt though, if this were my penthouse, I'd definitely be spending the majority of my time staring eastward. Those vibrant colours are just unbeatable. For the most part, this game is set in one of two environments, sprawling urbanised metropolis ranging from slums to the height of corpo power, or else plain and simple desolate desert. But there is a place at the heart of all that concrete and metal where, from the right angles, you can make it look and feel like V was nothing more than the protagonist of a forest survival game, such as, well, the forest. I mean, the gigantic neon city at hand is without a doubt a marvel of technical achievement, but in real life I do need my trees and plants sometimes, and so does everyone else as well, apparently. So the Night City Lower Gardens, just north of Embers, do indeed provide that perfect escape, to feel a little more at one with nature. And aside from the occasional deranged rampaging psychopath or hostile gang takeover, this place can serve as the epitome of peace and tranquility, providing a tint of green to your otherwise yellow and grey cyberpunk photo app. Album. The only place to really rival this I can think of is the Arasaka jungle, which we can access through one of the endings. It's just a shame we always wind up in there at night, since I reckon some really nice shots would have been possible if there'd been the option for daytime lighting. Still, this will instead have to do, I suppose. They say that the drive-in movie theatre is one of the most romantic locations for a date in the whole of Night City. Situated up in North Oak, this place unfortunately closed down decades ago, and it was only through the joint effort of V and Johnny Silverhand's engram that anybody ever managed to get an old movie to play. Returning a short while after that date between Johnny and Rogue, however, I was saddened to see another loving couple getting harassed by masked criminals. Unfortunately, since my go-to means of fighting now is by throwing and shooting grenades, I simply had to hope that the car was bomb-proof. Which apparently it luckily was. Well, criminals literally obliterated and projector seemingly out of action anyway, it was time to find another romantic view around here. Well, hopping over the fence at the end, that's exactly what I found. Off in the distance was a cluster of illuminated buildings so perfectly placed and balanced, it almost felt like somebody had designed it to be viewed from this exact angle. It's almost a shame that they had to place a screen and tall fence in the way. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but something I really love about photo mode is how light features will continue to move even though time time is technically paused. Hell, I could leave this running for a few minutes and then loop it onto an hour track of lo-fi cyberpunk beats to relax slash get chips to. Not a bad idea, if I knew the first thing about music creation. Well, guess it's worth bringing Pan Am here after all, though rather than watching a movie, I suppose we'll be watching the ad reel scroll into the sky. Night City is many things, but a Caribbean beach paradise is certainly not one of them. Now, Pacifica has a bit of a beach thing going on, sure, but the sand ain't exactly golden yellow. And despite Night City's population, you don't ever really see flocks of crowds so numerous that they block out the sand, like you do in real life. Let's be honest, Night City's beaches are certainly not the place to be, but that doesn't mean they can't be one of the most scenic locations in the game still. Heading over to the Parc Del Mar fast travel point and crossing the road down to here, we'll see some ocean terraces. You may have received a gig 
here for a wedding that went horribly wrong. I cover it in my Sad Encounters video. And returning now, it's clear that nobody in this town is paid to mop up blood because, well, it's still there. What's also here is a nice view of Pacifica, which is far enough away from the actual district that one could be deceived into thinking that Pacifica is a nice place to live. I mean, look, they've got a roller coaster, a ferris wheel, sand. Hell, it looks like a great time over there. Let me just snap a picture for the Insta and we'll be sure to go check the place out. It'll be a great time, for certain. No crime whatsoever. I even remember reading somewhere that Pacifica was supposed to be the Haven Holiday District of Night City. I'm sure that plan didn't go horribly wrong somewhere along the way. So, turns out, Pacifica had some pretty bad reviews on TripAdvisor, and the fun fair is apparently closed today, so for number 10, I guess we're doing something a bit different. Now, in one of the more recent updates to the game a few months back, varying neon umbrellas were added in. They're a very cool feature, which bring a ton more vibrancy to the game and improve visuals even more. Problem is, it barely ever seems to rain in this game, and waiting for days attempting to trigger the event seemed to yield pitiful results. So, my final location is over in Vista del Rey. Heading to the Congress and MLK fast travel point, then into this building just around the corner and up onto the terrace, we'll discover a direct reference to the Blade Runner franchise, specifically the Tears in Rain monologue. It's a very cool reference in and of itself, and up here is also great for dark, moody aesthetic shots more akin to Gotham City. But the most useful thing about coming up here is that it will trigger the weather to become rainy, which will linger for a bit when we return to the ground. Therefore, if you want to check out umbrellas or get pictures in the rain for any reason, this is a vanilla way of manually doing it. And the the streets of Vista del Rey themselves really aren't bad scenically either. It may sound weird saying this, but the area does have something of a cosy vibe. Almost like the streets are so sheltered by tall buildings that it's like the whole area is indoors. And all the orange and yellow road colouring most certainly gives out a sense of warmth. It's a great example of the depth and range of places throughout this city, and without a doubt one of the best places to get warmer feeling street level images for whatever purpose. Just be careful though, because while some street corners may look warm and inviting, the Valentinos most certainly are not. But let me know what you think. This video, after all, is based on my experience of Night City and is mostly an opportunity to share some thoughts I've had for a while and praise the city's awesome design. If you have other great locations, whether that's hidden areas or underrated scenic viewpoints, then do share them in the comments down below. I'm considering doing a review slash analysis video on all the varying districts and sub-districts of Night City, looking at how they vary in terms of tone as well as some key points of interest. Keep an eye out for that in the future, hopefully. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Sam Bram and I'll see you soon in another video.